Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this video, this is a baseball batting stance that will reduce strikeouts. In this video, we're gonna go over three different things. One is we're gonna look at the context of a baseball batting stance and how it connects to reducing strikeouts. We're gonna look at the metrics, specifically ones where we look at hitters with a low K percentage or low strikeout percentage and the top five highest strikeout percentages. And we're also gonna look at and see if we can overlap the information of high ISO models or power ISO which is basically a hitters, the metric for raw power for hitters. And we're gonna look at the specific models. Uh, thirdly, we're gonna look at the specific models for low K percentage and also have a above average ISO or raw power. So first, let's take a look at the context of what we're talking about. Now, this is the blog article that this, is, this video is for. But we're gonna look at one of my buddies, Ryan Lair, had a, a baseball hitting camp or softball hitting camp, they probably had softball girls there, where they had, he had Reggie Smith there, him and Reggie Smith kind of co-authored this camp, and they had Kevin Sweeney talk about how getting more athletic in the baseball batting stance allowed him to hit more difficult pitches. Now you can go on the blog, we'll put the link directly below this video in the About Us section if you're watching this on YouTube, so you can check out that, but that's on Twitter that he posted, really good video of that, and also that making adjustments to gravitational forces. Now my friend Taylor Gardner, who's the founder of the Backspin Batting Tee, talks about when a first baseman receives a ball from a say a shortstop or third baseman they're throwing somebody out that first baseman is going to step towards the ball and they're going to take their eye level to the le almost the level of the ball in the glove because what's going to happen is the ball the gravitational forces are going to be acting on the ball at all times so the moment the ball gets released from the, the thrower's hand that ball is going to start to decelerate out of the hand and it's also going to start to drop so the first baseman does this adjust to this gravitational force on the ball being thrown to them by striding towards the ball and getting low to get on almost get on plane with that ball and one of the things that's going to probably piss a lot of fast pitch softball coaches or instructors and pitchers off is that the, the rise ball is a myth. What I encourage you to do, and I agree with this, this is something Taylor Gardner said, what I encourage you to do, and here this is in the article, is find your fastest fast pitch softball pitcher, video record her throwing a rise ball from the side where we can get the pitcher and the catcher in the frame. So basically we're tracking the trajectory of the ball. You can use slow motion software either on your phone or some app like Coach's Eye or Ubersense or Huddle Tech is what their Ubersense is now. And I will be willing to bet a lot of money that the pitched, the apex of the pitched ball's arc will be above where the catcher catches the ball. There's no way that that ball is rising, especially if we're on Earth when it's dealing with gravitational forces. Obviously, there's gonna be less of an arc the harder the pitcher throws, but there will be an arc nonetheless. Who also gets in athletic positions, oftentimes I talk to my hitters and I ask them questions like, well, what's gonna happen if you defend against a quickly advancing soccer striker or you have to cover a wide receiver off the line you got five yards between you before the quarterback hikes the ball, what kind of position would you be in? Also, if you were the only one between a breakaway power forward and the hoop in basketball, what position would you be in? Also, what position would you be in to throw a 16 pound shot put as far as humanly possible, or even a 10 pound shot put if we're talking about a seven year old? Also, what position would you be in receiving a blazing serve from Roger Federer, or really any tennis tennis player that, that hits the ball pretty hard? I talk about this idea of triple flexion, which is basically, if you're looking at Michael Brantley's picture of him right now, you can see triple flexion. He's, he doesn't have quite as much as some of the players we're gonna look at today, but you can see he's bending at the hip, he's bending at the knee, and he's bending at the ankle. Basically what I talk about in the Joey Votto video, you can see the link here where we break down his swing and talk about how he's one of the best models for pitch plane domination. Now let's go, in and go into the metrics of low strikeout, high ISO hitters. Now what is, what is ISO before we kind of move on? It's basically, it's called isolated power. It's according to fan graphs, basically describes a hitter's raw power. So we're looking for a hitter that gets low strikeout percentage is basically below below average, way below average, but also can maintain some power elements. So we're looking at this isometric, it's a, it's, ISO is a glorified slugging percentage, but it's actually slugging percentage, if you look at these ways to calculate it, it's actually slugging percentage minus average, or you can also get it by taking the extra bases and divide it by at bats. Now if we look at 
This is a chart that I put together based on Fangdafs.com information. And what you'll see here on the left is a high K percentage. You see the top five here, Chris Davis, Michael Taylor, Chris Bryan, Ian, Des Ian Desmond, and Jock Peterson. And the lowest K percentage you see is Daniel Murphy, Andrelton Simmons, Buster Posey, Michael Brantley, Jose Altuve. I've also included the ISO numbers. As you can see here, I've got the averages down below, and you can see definitely there's a, a difference in the averages where you're looking at strikeout percentages, 30%. And if we look at down here in this chart, this is the this is how when we compare these hitters rank how they rank for K percentage. Now, as you can see, above average K percentage would be 16%, and then as it goes down, awful is is anything more than 27.5%. Well, you can see all these top top five strikeout percentage hitters they're all above 29%. You can see that's way more than awful. And then if you look over here, you can see that they're way past ex excellent. Daniel Murphy all the way down to Jose Altuve. And if we look at the chart for ISO, so ISO above average is 0 0.170. So if we look at this chart here, you can see obviously that most of these are above 0 0.170 on the high K percentage, except for Michael Taylor and Ian Desmond. But the rest of them are above that. Well, if you if we look over here at the lowest K percentage, if we're trying to look at low K percentage plus high ISO, or at least above average ISO, you can see that Daniel Murphy is up there. He's almost at above average. He is above average because average is 0 0.140, so he's above average. And then you can see Michael Brantley is 0 0.170. Buster Posey is almost there too. He's above average, and so is Jose Altuve, both both over 0 0.140. So what we're going to look at a couple specific hitters, and we're going to look at Daniel Murphy, Michael Brant Brantley, Motion Analysis Software. We're also going to look at Chris Davis and Jock Peterson, and Jock Peterson is actually a special case because he actually made an adjustment to his swing, his bat baseball batting stance towards the end of the season, and we're going to look at that in the analysis. So these, this, you can go to this article down below. There's a link below this video if you're watching this on YouTube in the About section. But let's go over to which low strikeout MLB hitters that also maintain high ISO that we can model if we're doing like what Tony Robbins says. And if you want to be successful, find someone who has achieved the results you want to want and copy what they do, and you'll achieve the same results. He also says that success leaves clues. So let's head over and check out the analysis of these hitters. All right, first up is you have Chris Davis over here on the left, and you have Jock Peterson here on the right. Now, both of these are 2015. This is towards the end of 2015 with Chris Davis, and this is in the middle of 2015 with Jock Peterson, because I'm going to show you in a minute the change that he made to his baseball batting stance, and we'll see probably the effect of this in 2016. We'll see how if that helps to him to cut down on his low strikeout percentages. But as you can see in their stance, you can see a more straight up and down. This is the opposite of triple flexion, more like triple extension, because we have more extension in the hip, extension in the knee, and extension not so much in the ankle, but more in the knee and the hip. You can see both hitters are standing straight up and down. They don't have much flex in their knees, but they both do a pretty good job of getting into a good flexed landing position. Both of them you have awesome knee action, but you can see this definitely starting from a standing up position, which we want to minimize head movement. Head movement is okay at certain times, but from the, the more and more I look at this, when we have a hitter who's standing straight up and down, what's gonna happen to the eye level is it's gonna shift from a, not only horizontal, but a vertical axis. So when you're standing more straight up and down, that vertical axis is seems to be the problem when it comes to low K percentage. Now again, this may not be correlation equaling causation, but we'll have to put more research into this and, and look at more hitters that do stand up and more up upright and see what kind of K percentage that they come up with versus hitters that have more of the triple flexion position. But you can see both of these hitters have more of an extended position standing straight up and down before they swing. Now let's take a look at Daniel Murphy, Michael Brantley, and then we'll come back to Jock Peterson. Now as you can see here on the left, you have Daniel Murphy. This is in the playoffs when he hit like six consecutive home runs. And as you can see, a lot different than Chris Davis or even Jock Peterson halfway through 2015. You can see the bend in the knees, you can see triple flexion. He does this better than actually Michael Brantley. And he is he's the top of the low strikeout percentage but also having a decent high ISO or above average ISO, almost in the actual above ISO category. And you can see this 
definite bend in the knee, the ankle, and the hip. If you look at Michael Brantley, same idea. Michael Brantley, I think, was third or fourth amongst the the low K percentage and also in the above average category for ISO. And you can see he's got not quite as much of a triple flexion bend as Daniel Murphy does, but you can st definitely still see a lot better bend in the knees, in the ankles, and at the hip than, say, Chris Davis or Jock Peterson halfway through 2015. Now let's take a look and compare, and you can see, even see more bend here with Michael Brantley as the pitcher gets ready to go. So now let's compare Jock Peterson halfway through 2015 to at the end of the season to 2015. All right, look at the distance here, or the distance, the difference here as we look at Jock Peterson halfway through 2015 over here on the left and then towards the end of the season in, in 2015. And you can definitely see a change in his approach. And this is basically the one of the only changes that we see mechanically that was really, you can see it with, with the eye. It's not something you have to slow down on slow motion analysis to see. Anybody can see this. But you can see the straight up and down posture versus the triple flexion posture. You can see a lot better bend at the waist over here on the right. You can see way better bend and flex in the knee and much better flex in the ankles. So when we look at these this analysis and these videos and we ask the question, a baseball batting stance that will reduce strikeouts, now can we correlate the batting stance and triple flexion to reducing strikeouts? And I think we can. I think that causation, the correlation, may not equal causation, but we can do some research and we can see and look at, analyze some of these hitters that have a lower strikeout percentage, but an above average high, uh, a higher ISO model, and take a look and see if we can correlate this to the causation of reducing strikeout. So I hope you like this video. Make sure that we're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go, the Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know that reducing ground balls and swing and miss strikeouts has less to do with hand path and more to do with knee action? Have you ever heard, finish taller? To drive the ball, you have to uppercut. But we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study that showed a reduction in ground balls of 27% and an increase in productive balls in the air of 24% over 200 swings without messing with hand path. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.